True Tantra is actually about non-duality, which is shadow work. So if you want to massively increase your charisma, come tonight, 5 p.m., shadow hunting to magnify your charisma at uh, Passion Temple. Passion Temple. I've been working with Klaus for three years, okay? Class was one of my coaching client. I really saw his soul the first time he, we were at Ada. I was teaching and he were looking to each other. I said, wow, so brother, you have a beautiful soul. And then later on, and on, he asked me, oh, can I work with you on some coaching? I said, yeah, great. And then we started doing some shadow hunting. And uh, oh, yeah. he's been working <laughs> really hard for three years. And now it's so good that we are here co-facilitating together. Of course, we will not always be, and by all parents, be unconditionally accepted. So. If, our parents didn't like us to be uh, to cry, for example, one of my shadows actually, like they didn't like when I was crying, they may show behaviors that may lead to where when I cry, I'm not being loved, or even worse, when I cry, I'm not gonna be safe. So at some point, I'm gonna put that in my shadow, I'm gonna become my own parent that is repressing this aspect of myself, the emotion of sadness. And this is one of the ways how shadows are created things about yourself that you definitely don't want anybody to know about yourself you you land right in the shadow and another way <laughs> that's the, the scary part the place where you don't want to look and uh, another part is like if you constantly see someone that's um, provoking you for example I was seeing like uh, guys here were like really good with the ladies and part of me like nah, man and uh, judgmental and then this often can show like wow maybe this is showing something i want to be better at so like this is called projection and we'll be going more into this to show yourself fully vulnerable and this is what i love about tantra because the true essence of tantra the true ancient indian tantra was not so much about uh hanky panky and uh, you know like temple nights it was actually about non-duality which means like showing all the parts shadows is parts that are separate from you that you repress and reintegrating that which is the essence of non-duality becoming whole again but as long as you have massive shadows inside you'll never be charismatic people will just feel the difference between true presence and fake presence so in my personal experience shadow work is not about like wanting uh, discovering something about yourself and wanting it to go away but it is actually about accepting and one of the ways to pick the weed like it's a metaphor we don't want to like pick it and like throw it away like oh it's bad it is actually self-love it's actually one of the most powerful like discover oh my god there's this pain and i don't want to uh, make it go away or like, uh, hide it but actually say oh my god yeah there, there is this pain and i give it all my love and thereby i remove the weed and uh what you said actually about um speaking up powerfully this is actually uh, one of the key aspects of charisma is power to speak loudly to speak directly to look people into the eyes all right so what what is charisma like yell something out what what is what is magnetism anybody like anybody seen someone magnetic just one word me is it anybody else anyone else yes aura the aura, aura. aura. anybody else confidence 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 yes Ooh. thank you yes. Charisma is often misunderstood. It's like people think it's something you either have or you don't have, right? Anybody think, feel so like, oh yeah, this person is charismatic, but I'm not? Anybody? Yes, used to think that. So the truth is that charisma is something that can be learned, something that uh, celebrities actually do professional trainings on. And the reason why we do actually um, work on the shadow is because the shadow, like all the things we're afraid of, all the things we want to hide, is exactly the thing that stops us from being authentic, being uh, courageous, being brave, being confident. And actually, so there's actually three particular behaviors that make someone charismatic. So we heard a couple of things. It's three specific things, and they're actually very tantric. That's the interesting part. So like, just quickly yell them out. What could it be? It's a behavior. So it's not, it's not some magical thing. It's a behavior, something you see someone else doing. Anybody? OK, wait, we had what? Kindness? Kindness. Okay, kindness. great. So kindness is actually one of them. Kindness, so the way we say it, it's warmth. Someone's warmth. Okay. Like, Savior is for me uh, the expression of warmth charisma. Like, warmth charisma means, like, when I'm with Savior, I feel like I'm loved. I feel like, wow, this person is really there for me and love me. So 
in essence, smiling. But how many of you can spot a fake smile? You cannot fake charisma, right? The reason why I work on the shadow is we need to remove the things that make us not smile to develop a genuine smile, all right? So we have warmth. Very important, we need to be loved and warm, uh, wanted by our parents and by other people. So we have one, two more. Here we go, here we go. The gentleman, nail it. So the key to charisma is presence. All right, so, um, hi, um, I'm Klaus, uh, and today I'll talk about uh, charisma. Does it work? No. Presence is the most important aspect of charisma. So how many times are you in a conversation and you notice the other person is, is just not there, right? They're like drifting off, you know, like how many women love it when they're in a date and the guy's like kind of drifting off or even worse going on the phone, you love that? So you cannot be charismatic if you're not present. So why again do we need to work on the shadow? If we have like inner demons haunting us and we feel like, oh my God, like all the time terrible, we cannot be there. And uh, what did Xavier just say? Uh, Vipassana, one of the most powerful meditation trainings if you're in Vipassana for 10 days silent, trust me, you'll learn what presence is, okay? So we have two out of three. What is the third one? So we have presence, the key, we have warmth, which means like the other person, we feel this person li loves us, likes us, and we need... Confidence. Something that balances out the warmth. Yeah, they're all good, what you said. Yes. He wants another one. There's, there's something, and, and we've been working on it already, so we've been using a lot of the exercise already. But it's, it's, where, 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 where? Power. 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 That's it. So he is a master of that, so it's going to be very hard to <laughs> rate him. So what I'm going to be doing, like, uh, I'm going to feel how present is Xavier with me on a scale of 1 to 10. And if I feel um, he's doing, like, around 5 or lower, I'm going to raise my hand, right? And you may not agree with it, right? Like, you may like, damn, like, hey, I, I was super present, right? <laughs> That's where the projection part is. Eye gazing or seeing the divine opposite. It's one of the most powerful things, and um, it's like soul gazing. Like, like sometimes you see someone's like really attractive, but as soon as you look in the eyes, you notice like oh, they're not quite there yet. Anybody experience something like that? Yeah. Like, it's one of the most powerful things. So, if you're in tantra and you can be really present in these situations, like wow, it's essential for charisma. And for me, that was the hardest thing because like I grew up with ADHD, right? Like I have a monkey brain, right? So, for me, learning that was essential. How was that to have someone in front of me present with me? Do I need more practice? Ah, take a deep breath. We are going to work on projection. So basically, whatever I project on Klaus, because he's a mirror of me, is actually a part of myself. But because this world is so distracting, I often forget about it. I think Klaus is taller than his is better than me at everything because it's look at him it looks like a Greek god <laughs> but what if it was a projection of myself but I don't know about it because I mean I'm lacking self-confidence because my parents were, and at school I was bullied and, and suddenly I don't see myself so the, the game we are going to do is we are going to, to walk around the room and find someone that something is alive and uh, I'm going to say the magic mantra. Hi, I'm projecting of you, or on you that you are very beautiful. And I know this is all, also an aspect of myself. Okay, it's a very simple game and it's actually very deep because the next time you blame your boyfriend for not never being on time or your girlfriend for never wanting this or never wanting that, Remember that game. Oh, it's also a projection about myself.